Gustavo de Graeff. Gustavo de Graeff Restrepo B. June 20, 1929 D. July 19, 2018 was a Colombian lawyer, educator, and activist who served as Attorney General of Colombia and Ambassador to Mexico. He was an outspoken critic of the United States' war on drugs in Colombia and an advocate for drug liberalization policies. Biography De Graeff was born in Bogota, D.C. on June 20, 1929, to Gustavo de Graeff Abregan and Cecilia Restrepo Piners. De Graeff was of Swedish descent by way of his father, whose grandfather was Carl Sigismund Fromholt von Graeff, a Swedish engineer and geographer who moved to Colombia in 1825 and whose family had played an active role in the abdication of King Gustav Roman IV Adolf of Sweden. He was married to Inez Lindo Capel, and they have three children together. Monica, also a lawyer and ex-minister of justice, Natalia, an engineer and ex-general manager of IBM in Colombia, and Camilo, a lawyer who graduated from Our Lady of the Rossary University, de Graeff returned to his alma mater, where he worked as a professor of introduction to law and insurance law at the Faculty of Law, later becoming deputy rector under Rector Roberto Arias Perez and subsequently replacing him as the 115th rector of the university on October 24. In addition to his tenure at El Rosario University, de Graeff worked as professor of civil law at the National University of Colombia and professor at the Graduate Faculty of Political Science at the National Autonomous University of Mexico while also participating as a conference speaker at different events in other participating centers of education. Attorney General In 1992, as part of the changes in government following the ratification of the 1991 Constitution, de Graeff was tapped for the position of Attorney General of the newly institutionalized Office of the Attorney General of Colombia, making him the top prosecutor of the nation. De Graeff was selected by the Supreme Court out of the ternary presented by President Cesar Gaviria Trujillo, which also included Hugo Escobar Sierra and Guillermo Salas Ileta, his former deputy rector and subsequent successor at El Rosario University. When de Graeff started as Attorney General, he was faced with the monumental challenge of determining the course of the office of the Attorney General and was entrusted with repairing the reputation of Colombia as a safe haven for criminals and drug lords and facing the various tactical inconveniences of a new agency such as operating from a hotel in central Bogota as there was no building for the office. De Graeff from the onset took the role of the Attorney General as an autonomous entity within the government very seriously which alienated members of the executive, angered legislators, and drove the judiciary to take action while raising his public image and standing but at the same time angering foreign powers. Escobar and the Drug Cartels The first challenge for de Graeff happened before he even assumed his new position and involved dealing with the conditions of the incarceration of Pablo Escobar, a notorious drug kingpin and boss of the Medellin cartel, who had recently voluntarily surrendered to the authorities, but as the media had shown, was living a life of luxury in his own personal jail, La Cathedral, where de Graeff wanted to move Escobar out of La Cathedral to a more secure prison where the authorities could see, look, inform on, and prevent irregular acts. Escobar, however, managed to escape during this arranged transportation which started a massive manhunt for him aided by the United States and the United Kingdom. His outspoken remarks against Escobar Someone feared by most politicians and journalists, however, popularized him and catapulted him into the media spotlight as a brave prosecutor who would take a stance against crime. Having garnered enough public support, de Graeff went on to readdress controversial cases like those of six innocent men jailed in connection with the assassination of Luis Carlos Gallen and those involved in the Escobar scandal. The Office of the Attorney General was primarily in charge of the investigation against Escobar's escape and future apprehension, facilitating clues and aiding in his apprehension. De Graeff, however, was under pressure from foreign governments who feared that his office was going to grant Escobar a deal to surrender which would not punish Escobar accordingly. 
This all ended on December 2, 1993, when Escobar was gunned down after he tried to escape when authorities discovered his location. After Escobar's death, several other criminals belonging to the group Los Peeps, who were in hiding for fear of Escobar's reprisals, agreed to surrender under a new law initiated by the Attorney General. This aimed to get drug traffickers off the streets by surrendering themselves to receive reduced sentences if they confessed their crimes and surrendered their ill-gotten gains, with further reductions if they provided testimony against other criminals. Du Graef was harshly criticized for this program by U.S. and Colombian law enforcement officials, who accused him of providing amnesty for criminals. In another controversial incident, De Graef was criticized after he held a private meeting with three suspected drug traffickers. They had reached out to him in hopes of working out a deal for leniency if they surrendered to the authorities. The problem, however, was that the suspects had no arrest warrants in Colombia and the United States, and after informing both authorities of their presence in his office, he was not able to get charges to arrest them. De Graef responded harshly to his detractors. In response to a letter from the Ministry of Justice, De Graef said, I am old enough to not have the Minister of Justice protect me from a hoax. Stance on Drugs Problems with the United States De Graef was, at one point, the toughest and most important partner the United States had in its war on drugs, but he had fallen from the grace of the Clinton administration by November 1993, when he had come out in favor of legalizing the use of drugs, the Clinton administration had also come out against de Graef's attempts to negotiate with drug lords and guerrilla members. A frustrated de Graef in turn described the Clinton administration's refusal to study legalization of drugs as not an ostrich policy, but a McCarthyite, Stalinist, fascist policy and when confronted by Senator Roberto Gerlin Echeverria on why he had gone to the United States to talk about drug legalization, he responded, You are right. This was the termination of the evidence-sharing agreement between the two nations. For the United States, this was a direct result of the American government's disapproval of de Graef actions. This in turn forced the Colombian government to come out in defense of de Graef in spite of their own personal disagreements, with the Attorney General, saying the government does not share any point of view, calling into question the sincerity and firmness of the Attorney General in its... The United States and Colombia found themselves in a diplomatic row over de Graef with the U.S. Department of State and the Colombian Ministry of Foreign Affairs exchanging letters, the U.S. calling de Graef's intrusion in the case of Dandenai Manas Mascara improper, while Colombia accusing Senator John Kerry of using his senatorial pulpit to damage the image of Colombia, and in 1995, under a provision which denies entry into the United States to anyone believed to have assisted drug traffickers, the U.S. rescinded de Graef's visa, further preventing him to enter the United States after accusing de Graef of having links to the Cali cartel, charges which he denied. Problems with the Church the church, church, the church, the church, church. Forced retirement. Ambassadorship. After de Graef retired as attorney general, he was given a diplomatic post as Colombia's ambassador to the United States of Mexico. Some of the challenges he faced during his time as ambassador included allegations of corruption and bribe-taking, the cancellation of his United States travel visa, protesters who wanted him declared persona non grata in Mexico, and assisting with Ernesto Samper's presidential visit to Mexico. De Graef was one of the few Colombian ambassadors who did not resign following the political scandal that directly linked President Samper to drug cartels and guerrilla members. Later Life and Death After leaving politics, Gustavo de Graef returned to his private practice and was appointed by Grant Thornton LLP, one of the largest international accounting and management consulting firms, manager in the firm's International Business Center, leading the firm's business development efforts in Latin America. Although de Graef did not return to politics, he continued advocating for decriminalization of drug use and speaking out against the war on drugs as a notable speaker and LEAP advisory board member. 
to grief died on July 19, 2018, at the age of 89. Works De Grafe Restrepo, Gustavo 1992. La Contratación Mercantil y Otros Aspectos Commercials in Spanish. Colgio de Abogados de Medellín. Medellín, Biblioteca Jurídica Dyke. ISBN 978-958-9000-276-28-0. Ocloc 318,349,733. De Grafe Restrepo, Gustavo, et al., 1993. El Principio del Pez Gordo, Estrategias para Combatir la Corrupción, The Beginning of the Fat Fish, Strategies to Combat Corruption in Spanish. Bogota Editorial Planeta Colombiana. ISBN 978-958-614-401-8. Ocloc 318 De Grafe Restrepo. Gustavo, de Grafe Lindo, Pablo 2000. Moralidad, Legalidad y Drogas Morality, Legality and Drugs in Spanish. Fondo de Cultura Económica. ISBN 978-968-16-6185-4. Ocloc 277198734.